Hello, and welcome to this video about variances. I'm Lynn Markham from the Center for Land Use Education. Thank you for joining us. Let's get started. Variances allow a property owner to do something prohibited in the zoning ordinance. So why do we have variances? Variances are in place to prevent regulatory takings and provide an escape valve. Takings occur when government restrictions go so far as to allow no reasonable use of a property. Variances are not meant to provide general flexibility in ordinances, as this would result in many leaks in the bucket and the purposes of the zoning ordinance would be lost. If they feel it's prudent, elected officials may revise the zoning ordinance to incorporate the level of flexibility the community supports. We have two types of zoning variances in Wisconsin, area variances and use variances. Area variances provide an increment of relief, normally small, from a physical dimensional restriction, such as a building height, setback, and so forth. So for instance, if a roadway setback is 50 feet, a property owner may apply for an area variance to build 45 feet from the road. Use variances permit a landowner to put property to an otherwise prohibited use. For instance, allowing a racetrack in an area zoned residential. Use variances are rare and problematic for reasons we describe in the Zoning Board Handbook. Use variances are prohibited in shoreland zoning. For all variances, the applicant has the burden of proof to show that all three tests are met unnecessary hardship due to conditions unique to the property and no harm to the public interests. For variances to a floodplain ordinance, the applicant must show they meet an additional 13 standards. The zoning board should not be providing applicants with the reasons the standards are met. That's the job of the applicant. A variance application should do three things. One, list each standard and explain what it means. Two, prompt the applicant to explain why they meet each standard. And three, let the applicant know the zoning board may only grant a variance if the applicant provides evidence to show that they meet all three legal standards. Now back to the three variance standards. Conditions unique to the property such as steep slopes or wetlands, must prevent compliance with the ordinance. If an alternative location exists on the property that would not require a variance, this standard is not met. Does every small or steep property qualify for a variance? No. If a person buys a small lot, they can not expect to get variances to build a large home that encroaches into setbacks on their lot. Similarly, if a property owner applies for a variance due to the steep slope shown in the photo, their property is not unique because the steep shoreline affects many properties in the area. A number of years ago, I was sitting in on a zoning board hearing where an applicant was applying for a variance to expand his boathouse larger than the ordinance allowed. After he presented his reasons, the zoning board let him know which of the three standards they felt he had satisfied. Then they told him he had not convinced them that he had a hardship and asked him why he felt like he needed a larger boathouse. He said, because I just bought a bigger boat that doesn't fit in my boathouse. That's not a hardship. Circumstances of an applicant, such as a growing family or a need for a larger garage or boathouse are not a factor in deciding variances. Hardship is based on the circumstances of the property, not the owner. A variance granted may not harm public interests. What are public interests? They're the purpose and intent listed in the ordinance that was adopted by the elected officials representing that community. Consider listing those ordinance purposes on your community's variance application form and variance decision form used by the zoning board. Short-term, long-term, and cumulative impacts of variance requests should be considered zoning staff can provide an impact analysis. Unnecessary hardship for Ariance variances 
is present when compliance with the ordinance would do one of two things. First, unreasonably prevent the owner from using the property for a permitted purpose. For example, if a lot is zoned residential, would complying with the ordinance prevent the lot from being used for a home? If the property owner is already living in a home on the lot, then they're not prevented from using the property for residential use. Unnecessary hardship can also be present when compliance with the ordinance would be unnecessarily burdensome in view of ordinance purposes. So what does the phrase unnecessarily burdensome mean? Fortunately, we have a Wisconsin Supreme Court case decision on what unnecessarily burdensome means. It is known as Snyder versus Waukesha County Zoning Board. In this case, a property owner built the porch shown in red without a building permit and then applied for an after the fact variance. Does that ever happen in your community? The porch, which I believe was to be used as a family room, encroached into the side yard setback. The yellow dotted lines show the setbacks for the lot. The question for the Supreme Court was, should an after the fact variance be granted for the red porch because removing it would be an unnecessary hardship. The Wisconsin Supreme Court said, no, the variance shouldn't be granted because the hardship was self-created and the porch is no more than a personal convenience. This is a key phrase for zoning board members. Is a proposal a personal convenience or does it rise to the level of an unnecessary hardship? The court went on to say, growth of a family and personal inconvenience do not constitute practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship, which justify a variance. It is not the uniqueness of the plight of the owner, but uniqueness of the land, which is the criterion. In addition to the three variant standards in state statutes, the Wisconsin courts have given us the following case law regarding variances. Self-created hardship. An applicant may not claim hardship because of conditions created by his or her own actions. Loss of profit or financial difficulty do not constitute hardship. A zoning board may consider an error of a local government staff person when deciding whether to grant a variance. Lack of objections from neighbors does not justify a variance. Similarly, nearby ordinance violations, things that were built illegally, don't justify a variance for another property owner. Also, a variance once granted runs with the property to all future property owners. Back to the Snyder case. The owner said not having a deck would be an unnecessary hardship for five reasons. I'll list the reasons the owner provided and then the response from the Supreme Court as to whether each was a hardship. The porch, substantially completed, would have to be removed. The Supreme Court said self-created hardships don't count. The lot is substandard in size. The Supreme Court said this substandard lot is treated the same as other substandard lots, so that's not a hardship. Three. The porch could not be attached to other sides of the home. The court said, the porch may not be feasible at all on this property, but that's not a hardship. Four, the owner needs the porch to enjoy lake living for his family, including six children. The court said, hardship is based on the physical property, not the applicant. And five, the owner said the porch would add value to the house. And the court said, loss of profit is not hardship. So I'm sometimes asked, what is an unnecessary hardship? Here are a few possibilities. Homes that would require a variance to add their first indoor bathroom. That would be considered a hardship because in today's day and age, people expect indoor plumbing and indoor bathroom. Here's a second situation. Um, let's say a lot is zoned residential, but the setbacks don't leave home even for don't leave room even for a small home. Um, the property owner would have a stronger case here if they had already been granted permits for other things 
typically done on residential lots, such as a driveway permit or a septic permit. So a quick review of what we covered in this video. A variance can only be granted by a zoning board if an applicant has shown that all three standards are met, unnecessary hardship due to conditions unique to the property and no harm to the public interests. Thank you for joining us. Please contact me if you have any questions about variances. Thank you.